All right, Malia. Yes. Malia, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, born in Phoenix, raised in Riverside, California. And uh, tell me about your family growing up. You had both mom and dad? Um, no. It's hard to say. I had a mom, but um, different dads. Different dads. <laughs> Who raised you, mostly? Mm. My mom. Your mom. She's Filipino. I'm sorry? She's Filipino. Filipino? Yeah. How would you describe your childhood? Um, I don't know, I, I grew up fast. If I didn't have a childhood, I grew up fast. What do you mean by that being well, from a child to an adult? What kind of stuff was going on? Um, chaos, basically. Any abuse? Yeah. Physically, sexually, mentally. What age did that start? Nine. I'm sorry? Nine. Nine? I have um, nine sisters, four brothers. Who is, who is sexually abusing you? Uncles, cousins, and... Your mom's boyfriend? Yeah. yeah. How far did you go in school? I uh, graduated. You graduated high school? Mm-hmm. And where'd you go after? Uh, I went back to Arizona. My life just went to hell. Are drugs a part of your life? Yeah. Yeah. Started 14. I ran away. Where'd you go? With him. With, yeah, to Arizona. Arizona and everywhere. How are you supporting yourself? Right now? Or back then, or then? Uh, the sex traffic and all that. Did you have somebody, uh, do you have a pimp back then? I don't know. got a guy to take care of me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Is that still kind of what you're into? Um, no, no, I'm not. Not now. I mean, I did prison time. I've been saying how long. I did a long time. How do you support yourself today? No, I'm through, um, I'm on welfare. I mean, yeah, welfare assistance. I'm trying to stay off the street. Because I'm trying basically to stay off the radar, you know, I'm trying to do good things, but it's just, I'm trying so hard that I'm just fucking up, basically. <laughs> yeah. What's your drug today? My drug of choice? Bad I'm sorry? Meth. It's meth? been, it's been since I became a, I went to prison, became a heroin addict. Uh, I quit maybe seven months ago. Yeah, and put into heroin and um, meth. Always mixed it. Hmm. It was like, like that roller coaster. Sure. Like, yeah. And where do you stay now? You have, you have I have an SRO. Oh, you do? Yeah. But you, you, but you lived on the streets as well? 
Mm -hmm. You've lived down the street as well? Yes. Yes. How long have you been down here in Skid Row? Um, two months. Two months. Where were you before this? On um, V9. Hmm. They didn't, didn't work the street because I didn't want to go back. I mean, it's like. How many times have you been arrested? Huh? How many times have you been arrested? Uh, multiple. Uh, multiple times. Uh, maybe like drug charges and um, prostitution. But I was in Arizona and uh, Mexico and um, Arizona, Mexico and um, Rocky Point. Mm. Yeah. You still have contact with your family? No, they don't want nothing to do with me. What age did you become transgender? Um, I'm sorry? 14. 14? Was that difficult for you back then? No, no. Well, I didn't know the dude I met, the guy that fucked my life up. <laughs> yeah. How did you fuck your life up? <laughs> I went. I can never go into Taco Bell. <laughs> um, she taught me how to, um, to please a man. In the, in the Taco Bell bathroom. I'm sorry? In the Taco Bell bathroom. Tell me how to please a man in the Taco Bell bathroom. Show me how. Oh, he showed you how to please a man mm -hmm. in the Taco Bell bathroom. Yeah. And that was the start of your career is a... yeah do you have friends today no i have no friends at all none really um gotta be a hard life yeah lonely life yeah pretty much i'm trying to like i want to settle down and just fucking find someone but everybody's just like okay i get I'm doing all this prison time, and I get out. Don't everything's changed? The the whole place where I was at changed. Um, this is like in Arizona, that's why I came back home here. I call California my home, but you know, but I was in Phoenix over there, and they dropped me off. They let me out, and I'm out, back on my own uh, stomping ground where I was. Everything's changed because it's owned by, um, as an east side of Phoenix, it was owned by um, ASU, ASU College. So they changed the whole radio into um, skyscrapers, big apartments, you know. Everything's changed. Mm -hmm. since I, yeah. And I'm, your... I'm trying to figure everything out on my own. Because I was taught that how, to, um, how I can survive on my own without depending on anybody. But Do you feel like you've just been surviving the rest of your Yeah, life? I've been trying, but I mean, it's like I'm trying to catch up. But every time I try to catch up, like, something slows me down. I'm backed up. It's like. But I'm. I'm I'm a tough person though. I mean, I put up with a lot of shit. I put up, put up with people talking bad about me when they don't even know me. I mean, it's, it's a year, the like year to year. I mean, it's like, it's just, they don't even know nothing about me. They're calling me this, calling me that. And I'm trying to show them I'm not that. I'm not even that. I mean. What was the best time of your life? What are your, what's your best memory? At this time? My, in my life or childhood? Anything. Uh, I would say the best time, the best thing in my life was getting my dog. That was 
I only had him for like two months now since I moved here. Hmm. And that was when, at what age? It was just recently. It was just re recently. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, he's a Virgo too. I'm a Virgo. He's a Virgo. He just celebrated his um, birthday Sunday with me. So our birthdays are on <laughs> September 5th. So we celebrate our birthday together. I mean, that's my, I mean, that's my, that's my best friend right now. He's my um, confidant, or my um, mm -hmm. emotional support animal, physically. But I talk to him like he's human. He acts human. Mm -hmm. he's, I mean, if we met him, you'll see he's really, really, He's a really good dog. But the thing is, I mean, I keep thinking I'm wearing him down because this is that I heard on the radio, I heard it somewhere say that an animal, a dog, a canine would do your, your dog owner. He will feel what you feel. He'll feel your emotion. And I went through a lot. I mean, <laughs> what's, what's your biggest regret? Uh, biggest regrets, but I can't be me. I'm sorry? Biggest regret is that I can't be me. It's like I have to walk on the... Um, I have to walk on eight shells around this place. Sorry. Being trans is, is difficult, even here in LA? Yeah. What kind of stuff happens to you? I thought it'd be cool, I mean, thought it'd be... Um, Well, some we're not liked, I guess. I don't know. I guess some some other trans gave 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 us a bad name because I guess they're scandalous or trifling or whatever. Whatever they did, I'm paying the consequence for or whatever. I don't know. So I feel I don't know. I'm just trying to. They're just trying to live my life, you know. I'm just trying to. Do the right thing, trying to. Yeah. I remember, I remember, I remember when getting high used to be fun. <laughs> now it's just like. Just like bullshit now. It's like. Everybody's, everybody's judging everybody, everybody's fucking. Society's changed big time. What's been the lowest point of your life? Huh? What's been the lowest point of your life? The lowest point of my life is when I lost my mom. Hmm. Yeah, it's the lowest. Hmm. Leo, what, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your life? The most important thing I learned in my life was how to accept me, how to love me, which I do love me, even with all this bullshit around. I do love me. No, whatever happens, whatever happens to me, I forgive him, I forgive them. You know? All right. Well, Leah, well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Yeah, no problem. I wish you the best of luck out there. I hope so. <laughs>